Good morning, everyone. This is our post scrub briefing for the COTS demonstration flight. And here to talk about what happened during the last part of the countdown this morning is Gwen Shotwell, the president of SpaceX, and Alan Lindenmoyer, the manager for the NASA Commercial Crew and Cargo Program and the COTS Program Manager. So we'll begin first with a statement from SpaceX and Gwen Shotwell. Gwen? Thanks, George. So we had a, uh, a nominal countdown right until about T minus 0.5 seconds. Uh, engine controller noted uh, high chamber pressure in engine 5. Uh, software did what it was supposed to do, aborted, uh, aborted uh, engine 5, then we went through the remaining engine shutdown. Um, so uh, what we're doing now is we are detanking the vehicle, safing the flight termination system, doing what we call a T-tip sweeps, which basically clears the uh, ignition fluid, and we should have some technicians up into that engine about noon today. Uh, we'll be out there looking for whatever we can find, and we'll put out a statement as soon as we find root cause. Uh, the attempt, next attempt, assuming uh, whatever we see is, uh, is repairable, uh, we will go in and uh, try another, another day on the 22nd. We're looking at a backup day on the 23rd as well. NASA's already taken a look at that day and is, is go. Uh, we need to make sure the range is available, though. We don't currently have the 23rd with the range. All right, thanks, Gwen. Alan. Right, so we're looking at the uh, additional launch opportunities. Uh, this 22nd, of course, was, looks good. That was pre-planned. The 23rd uh, looks like it's a good date from the trajectory, and uh, the station crew says they're ready to support, so we believe uh, we'll have a good day on the 23rd, and then there's a couple days after that that look like uh, it's a good phasing period. So uh, we're, we're ready to support when, when SpaceX is ready to go. All right. We'll take some questions now. Please be sure to give your name and affiliation when you get the microphone. And uh, we'll start here in the front with Marsha. Marsha Dunn, Associated Press from Ms. Shot. Well, I think you said it in your opening remark, but when did the clock actually start to stop? When was the abort actually called precisely? T point, sorry, yeah. T minus 0.5 seconds. 0.5. Half a second left, and and at that up until that point, all the all nine engines were firing as they were supposed to. Engine five was increasingly uh, engine five was uh, trending uh, high, okay. uh, but it hit the abort limit t minus point five. Okay, great. Thank all you. other engines were right on. Yep. We've compared this data to the static fire f fire data as well, and that's one of the reasons why we aborted. It was out of family from static fire. Is there anything funny seen on number five during the test firing? Nope. No, nothing. It's rock solid. All right. All right, right here. Um, are you, can you, can you name and uh, sorry, this is Clara Moskowitz with space.com. Um, is it still possible that it was a sensor failure or was it definitely an over high pressure in that engine? This does not look like a sensor failure. And, and is this at all similar to any of the other glitches you've experienced in other countdowns before? I, I'm sure we've seen this in, uh, in engine testing. I don't recall whether we saw this uh, during a static fire or, or on the pad for flight. Okay, right here. Uh, Sawyer Rosenstein for Talking Space. I was wondering if, it, if this were to occur during launch, how many engines can fail for it to still achieve success? And... Um, Yes. <laughs> it depends on the phase of flight. Uh, we need to lift off with all nine, which is why we aborted. Uh, you can lose, uh, I believe, up to two flights, or excuse me, two engines, and still make your mission, just not at liftoff. And the software all worked according to plan for the cutoff? We cannot blame the software guys for this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's come over here and go to the back here, Dave. Well, that, that's all right. Brendan McGarry, Bloomberg News. How many times have you aborted at this at this moment or this juncture? I know this is obviously this was the third attempted launch of the Falcon 9. Did the one and two also have a, a similar abort? I believe we aborted with PC pressure high on engine five during flight one, actually. But uh, we had the time, the ability to recycle and fly. Uh, and you couldn't this time because of the window. That's correct. That's correct. 
Okay, in the back. David Hirsch with NHK. A quick yes, no, and then a follow-up substantive question. The On the May 22, possible May 23rd date you're giving, that's pending the text going to the pad and, and finding out what happened, I'm assuming. Correct. Uh, there's a note from Elon earlier that says slightly high combustion chamber pressure, engine 5, will adjust limits for countdown in a few days. How do we reconcile that information with what you're saying? Well, that, that was early data. Uh, a further uh, analysis of the data that we were able to snatch and take a look at. Looks like it's something we want to go in and inspect. Okay. And, and finally, obviously, to, you know, today or, or maybe tomorrow we'll wake up and there'll be a lot of characterization of this as being potentially even a failure. And I wonder, as someone who's kind of leading the trend here for commercial, uh, commercial cargo and potentially commercial crew, how would you react to those sorts of statements? Yeah, this is not a failure. Uh, we aborted with purpose. Uh, it would be a failure if we were to have lifted off with an engine trending in this direction. Ken? Hi, Ken Kramer, Space Flight Magazine for Gwen. Um, if you had to change the engine, how long would that take? What would that involve? That would take a couple of days. Uh, we are looking at that operation. However, we do have uh, the next vehicle here at the Cape in our hangar. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, taking Engine 5 off of that vehicle and uh, looking at the op to put it on this one, if necessary. Well, that's still the same amount of time, though, isn't it? If you took the engine off of one rocket and put it on the other, or what are you saying? I'm not sure. That That's a more detailed operation than repairing or or just clearing this particular engine. But we're looking at doing that if necessary. Thanks. All right, let's uh, go to the telephones. I think we have one phone in question. Go ahead, Max. Questions are already answered. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Any further questions here? All right, let's go to here to uh, Jay Barbary. Jay Barbary, NBC. Uh, Ms. Shotwell, is 23rd launch time, would that be 3.21 a.m.? And could you tell us at what time, what part in all, after the launch, how many plus seconds would it be that you could continue uh, flying with, say, eight engines and then uh, uh, seven engines? You say you have to have all nine to lift off. But along somewhere along there, you can get along with eight, and then you can get along with seven. Can you tell us where that is? You know, I can't tell you right now, Jay, but I'll, I'll get back with you on that. Launch time for the 23rd? It's about, that's correct. L launch time on the 22nd is 3.44, and you we take off about 20 minutes each day. So 3.21, is that right? The three, I think it's 23, is that correct? 3.21 a.m.? Do you have it? I, I don't have it with okay. me, Thanks, but it, it's sir. approximately the right time frame. All right, thank you. All right, um, James, you have a question, James? Okay, all right, right here. Jason Potter with Wired. Can you just clarify again, were all nine engines, uh, did, did ignition begin for all nine engines, and that was the flash we saw? And that is correct. We had uh, nominal ignition for all nine, uh, and all engines, with the exception of engine five, trended nominally. Uh, engine five started fine and then started trending high PC pressure, chamber pressure, excuse me. All right, uh, any further questions? All right, one right here in the front. James Sutton with the Valencia Voice. I'm just curious, uh, since it came down to 0.5 seconds before the launch, does the uh, did the rocket lift off at all? Like, did it raise at all or just stay down? No. Okay. The, the, we hold the vehicle down with purpose to watch for this exact uh, this exact issue. You want, just like a pilot at the end of a runway revs the engines and looks at the gauges. We were revving the engines, we were looking at the gauges, and we decided not to fly. Okay, uh, Irene, do you have a question? Thanks. Um, Irene Klotz with uh, Reuters uh, for Gwen. I, I know it's kind of early for rocket school, but um, <laughs> typically what sorts of things might cause this kind of high pressure reading? Thanks. Uh, high pressure coming from high temperatures, which is li likely low fuel, lo low fuel in the combustion. Well, the valve, if the valve wasn't opened, although we check, I was able to check that before I came over. It looks like the pre-valve, uh, fuel pre-valve open was fully open. Um, so now we're just going to have to go in and spend a little bit more time looking at the data. Mark Ratterman with Talking Space. Is the inspection you talk about doing later today, is that a visual? Is that uh, 
uh, involve disassembly? Is how, how complicated is that inspection of that engine? We can, uh, we'll do a visual obviously up in the chamber, look at the fuel ring and the panel tip. Uh, I believe we'll probably bore scope the pump as well. We'll only disassemble if we have to. Okay, we have another question right here. Yeah, just because the, it sounds like there was a similarity to, to this uh, on the first attempt of the Falcon 9, it, do, do you get a sense that, that, there, is, that there is a pattern there, that, that, that it's, it is the valve or that there's some kind of similarity between the, what happened on an earlier mission? We, on flight one, uh, the, uh, I don't believe the engine was trending quite uh, the way this one was. We had a narrow, correct, we had a narrower abort on, on flight one. Okay, Marsha, you have a follow-up? We were told you were going to try every three days, and so now you've got just the one-day difference between the 22nd and 23rd. Could you explain why 23rd is possible now when it wasn't really in the mix before? I did talk about the 23rd as an opportunity yesterday. In general, we have very good opportunities every three days, but it really depends on the trajectory of the International Space Station. Um, I am not an orbit uh, analyst, so I can't help you much more than that, but I'll, I'll try to follow up with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, James Dean. James Dean with Florida today. Is is the engine swap out, if you determine that's necessary, the only thing that would force you to, to r roll back into the hangar? Or, or if you do have to roll into the hangar, does that determine what's like? Does that determine your next earliest uh, opportunity? Could you still get off on the twenty second, or or would that push you to we should a certain be able, number of days? We should be able to roll back into the hangar and get back to the twenty second. I don't want to speculate on what would cause us to do that or not. I just I just don't have enough data. We wanted to come here as quickly as we can and get you what the, the information we had. But no, we could we roll back. Uh, we can roll in and roll back by the twenty second. 